Morning garden fans. Today I am on site at Mount Vernon. This is where George Washington lived. And we are visiting the pioneer garden that they have here. And it's pretty nice. They're doing a really good job keeping it uh, kept up. Wanted to give you a little tour of the place. I'm just going to do my best to identify the plants they got here and keep my mouth shut because the natural beauty is a lot better than anything I could say. So they've got a large bed here of mustard greens. Must be trying to uh, get the soil sweet for the next succession of planting. These are all trees they've propagated. Looks like boxwood, live oak, a couple hollies. This is different than the kitchen garden they also have on site. We'll get to that one later. Some rows of celery here coming up and looking good. Lots of cabbage here. Pretty good looking heads of cabbage. A little frosty out here today, but everything seems to still be alive. Check out this little piece of ice we got growing on here. But they're surviving really well. Lots of cabbage, a couple different varieties of cabbage here. We've got some dinosaur kale coming up. Lactocinto. Looking very strong. I wanted to get a video of this uh, board here. This is straight from one of George Washington's farm managers. It's their philosophy on seeds and seed saving. I'll give you a minute here to read it because uh, it's exactly what I think. It is miserable for a farmer to buy his seeds. It's a lot easier to save your seed, guys. George Washington and his, uh, his land manager thought the same. So this particular area of his home was saved for seed saving. Here they got globe artichoke coming up and growing on. They're looking pretty good. Still thriving in the cold. They use hay from the stables, obviously, to mulch everything. I'm glad that they mulch. Got more cool weather crops here, broccoli. Haven't yet started to crown up. However, they're getting close. And they're looking really good. And they will survive the winter here. Some more rows of cabbage. Looks like they're resting this land here. This is in another big bed of mustard greens. They're obviously trying to sweeten up this soil for the next succession of planting. This looks like one of Washington's favorites, jessamine. I have no idea what to do with it or what it's used for, but here it is, growing. Looks like we got a couple rows of rutabagas over there. Salsify. I, I have no idea what that's used for. <laughs> Never used it myself, but here it is. Growing strong. Couple rows of it. Couple rows of rutabagas too. They're looking pretty big. They've also got some non-edible plants cultivated and propagating here. That yellow willow, weeping willows. And they got some pawpaw trees here coming up. 
Those will definitely produce. So this is a nice little nursery here. They use uh, the plants here for seed saving and for the kitchen, somewhat the kitchen garden. There is a restaurant on site that uh, is uh, it's supplied with a lot of the vegetables and fruits here on site at Mount Vernon. So here's just one step of the journey. Hope you enjoyed it. Next stop is the, uh, I don't know, I guess it's the kitchen garden next. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Keep in touch. Hey there, I'm taking a little detour to show you the fruit garden and nursery. Not a whole lot uh, of greenery growing on, but seems to have a lot of apples, peaches. They do grow well here in Northern Virginia. Washington, uh, General Washington had a specific uh, goal in mind with his planting. It's clearly written here on this fruit garden plaque. He did enjoy his trees to be exactly 40 feet apart. And for every acre on his property, he wanted apple trees. Not so much for cider making, but for food, food stocking. So I wanted to take a quick detour here and stop and show you the fruit garden before we move on. It's pretty nice. Not a whole lot growing on, but just like the plaque says, he's got a tree about every 40 feet. And they are of the apple and peach variety. Everything's obviously dormant right now, and they also have a small nursery down there at the bottom of the hill. But here it is, General Washington's Fruit Garden. Right, let's move along. I'm ready to go see the fun stuff, stuff I like. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying the tour, guys. So here we are at the upper gardens and greenhouse. This is mostly ornamental, some edible. I'll give you a quick view of this before we move on to my favorite section. This is the greenhouse proper. Apparently they did a lot of seed starting in here. And once again, this is done in a old English style. Allotment style, I would call it. Got a lot of cabbage and kale coming up here. There's lots of ornamentals here. The, the hedges are not vegetable hedges, but boxwoods and hollies. Lots of flowers and ornamentals here. It's got some Swiss chard, carrots. I see some hydrangeas over there. It's a pretty nice little garden here. Still not quite yet my favorite, but that's coming up. Once again, everything's been hedged off. It's got a brick fence around it, white picket on top. They did their best, obviously, to keep the larger pests out. Cabbage. A lot of flower beds here. This must have been a real hot spot for the bees. Got a couple grapes trellised up on the section here. Three rows of grapes. I don't know what variety or cultivar, but they are grapes. Cabbage, more artichokes, globe artichoke. Well, it's been enjoyable. This has been enjoyable. Hope you guys are having fun. Let's get on to my favorite spot. The lower kitchen garden. Alright, here we are. My favorite spot, the lower garden or kitchen garden. I'll give you a minute here to read this. You can pause and read it. This is what I've been waiting for. So the whole place is walled off, obviously, to keep the larger pests out, like deer and such. But this is very, uh, the style here is done in the, seems to be the old English style, obviously. 
allotment style garden. Many of the fruit trees are cordoned off. In fact, around all the edges, all the trees have been cordoned, cordoned off. And a nice British herb here. This is germander. Similar to thyme, but not quite like thyme. Around all their vegetable beds, they've companion planted. Right here, we've got a looks like a, a border of thyme that they've got, silver thyme around this big vegetable bed here where they seem to be resting the soil. This bed has lavender around it as well as more cordoned trees. Another bed being rested. Got more lavender around the border of this. I really enjoyed the companion planting they decided to do. Very smart. Uh, and this was General Washington's kitchen garden, so to speak. This was uh, the daily stop for the slaves to come and uh, where they would prepare dinner and such. It's an apple tree. It's like a dwarf apple tree, once again. Splatered up. More thyme here on this uh, bed surrounding the dinosaur kale again. And this is dinosaur kale. Oh my gosh, this is large. And healthy, looking good. Got the globe artichokes. And dives. Some more mustard greens. Here we go. Here's the explanation of all the trees. It's really awesome. They've done a good job here, and it's obviously not the same garden that General Washington had, but it is done in the style that he would have done. They've got a lettuce bed down there surrounded by lavender, it seems. Lots of lavender down there. Apples all down this walkway here. I, I can imagine there's just tons and tons of fruit here in the spring and in the summer. There's a rosemary bed with more lettuces grown up. Seem to have some horseradish growing in that little plot. Here there's a giant water cistern where they were obviously keeping the bed watered and there was no irrigation. They have grapevines trellised along this area here. Down by that, that's strawberries. That's also bordered with thyme. A lot of thyme borders. Thyme is a great medicinal herb, one of my favorites to grow. This little plot here, we got some rosemary and broccoli coming up. Lots of rosemary up here. Lavender borders. Carrot bed. Seems to be a blackberry bed back there. Onions. Beautiful garden, all done English style. herb plot here. He's got some onions coming up. Another thyme border. Looks like they got lemon balm and mint. Here's some more information for all the historians. I'll give you a minute there. More lavender borders, thyme borders, lemon balm right there. Uh, this has been my favorite so far. They've done a real great job here trying to recreate uh, the style and structure of an old uh, English garden, so to speak, in the style that George Washington might have had, although this is not exact. It is similar and real fun. There's another water cistern right there. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tour. Once again, I love ecotourism. I don't like to go anywhere without checking out some kind of gardens. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this tour this time around. Please give me that thumbs up, you know, like this, subscribe if you enjoy the content. I try to bring the best content to my viewers as possible. 
a lot better than the mainstream media, guys. Hope you enjoyed the tour. God bless. See you All next right. time. I lied. I'll end out with the money shot. This is what everybody wants to see anyway. Old George Washington's house. It cracks me up that more people come to see stuff like this than the gardens, but okay, whatever you like. Hope you enjoyed the tour again, guys. God bless. Keep in touch.